Rolex, the symbol of a man with no taste and no mind of his own. Kind of like an iPhone. Um, I, but I have both. And no, at the full retail price, the Hamilton Khaki Field isn't exactly a great value. Now I've said this in the past many times, but the 62 Moss 1965 diver model could have been, and probably more importantly, should have been Seiko's direct competitor in the dive watch genre to brands like Rolex, Tudor, and Omega. And I wanna ask you guys, what do you think about that? Do you miss and did you like my old videos that were sometimes over an hour long? What's up everybody, I'm Guy, you're watching Just Bluefish Watch Reviews channel, and this is my semi-regular Sunday with Guy episode, I guess you'd call it. This is where I field viewer comments, questions, and messages. And of course, I do a little ranting and raving about things that are on my mind. Now, I got a ton of great comments from you guys on last week's video, so I'll dive into some of those today. And if you want to have any of your questions or comments featured in a future video, you can leave them in the comments down below. Or you could join the Just Bluefish Facebook group page or of course you can email me. You can reach me via email at justbluefish at gmail.com. Can a cell phone be considered a pocket watch? Yes, I think of course it can be, but you have to attach a chain to it for that to count. Now, speaking of pocket watches, sometime in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, I'm gonna have a really cool watch on the channel for review. It's a Longines Weems second setting watch. And uh, no, it's not a pocket watch per se, but it is an aviation watch that has a lot of design inspiration from classic pocket watches, including a case back that folds open to display the beautiful movement. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. While you were gone, Seiko issued three more limited edition releases of the 62 Moss reissue. As I mentioned in last week's episode, I have been off of YouTube for a little bit. I needed some time to deal with my health and my wellness, and yeah, apparently I missed a lot of stuff, including several 62 Moss reissues of reissues. And I have to say that it is a shame that Seiko has handled the 62 Moss so poorly. Now I've said this in the past many times, but the 62 Moss 1965 diver model could have been, and probably more importantly should have been, Seiko's direct competitor in the dive watch genre to brands like Rolex, Tudor, and Omega. And if they put some time and a little bit of money into upgrading a few of the things on their 62 Moss limited edition watches and just made it a regular production model, that watch could be an instant classic and a fan favorite, and I for sure would buy one. Now, all they really need to do is make sure that the movement is super reliable and accurate. They need to square away that bracelet and the clasp with a high quality setup, and it needs to be priced in a range of, I think, $3,500 to $4,000 would be okay. And I'm telling you, it would be the watch of the year and maybe the watch of the decade. I don't know why they are sh so short-sighted when it comes to this watch. Just my opinion, Guy. You are a great YouTube creator. You set yourself apart from a lot of the watch YouTubers. Personally, I love your longer off-script videos, but the shorter ones probably push the algorithm, so that's good too. While I have a passion for this, I will enjoy your banter. It seems like you are truly the person in front of the camera. That's refreshing. And I'm sure sticking to a schedule for uploads will be good for you and your channel. Good for it as long as you enjoy being a part of the community. Thanks again and happy Sunday. Hey Thomas, thank you for the super chat message. That is greatly appreciated. And thank you for the kind words and for the support. I really do appreciate it. Now, this message is in reference to the discussion that I had last week during that episode about my plans and my goals for this channel. And I would really like to get my channel back on track, I guess you could say, and get it growing again. It's just kind of stagnating for the last year or two. And yeah, I know that it stalled because of my inconsistent upload schedule, sometimes going weeks and even months without putting up new content. So I'm gonna be trying my best to up my game and to get back into the swing of things. Now, Thomas did say something interesting regarding my longer off-script videos that I used to do back in the day. When I started this channel, I had this concept to do really long, in-depth reviews. Now, the problem with those videos, in hindsight, I started noticing that I was rambling way too much, that I was going off topic, I wasn't getting to the point that I wanted to make, or I was repeating myself too often because I'd lose track of what I had or what I hadn't already said. Now, I think the concept was solid, but yeah, it was just sloppy and poorly executed, 
in my opinion. When I go back and look at those videos, it's a little bit embarrassing. Now, I also just did one static camera angle of my hands holding the watch in front of the camera, and the quality of the video was really, really low back then. Honestly, I gotta say I'm surprised that anyone watched those old videos, but yeah, I guess let me know. Who here would like to see me go back to that kind of format, if maybe nothing else, at least occasionally? Master of Puppets, Lateralis, and a Les Paul. You're a man of good taste, sir. Now that comment is in reference to my somewhat newish studio setup with the uh, skateboard wall art over there and a few of my favorite album covers up there and of course my guitar, the Gibson Les Paul. And yeah, I have to agree, I am a man of good taste. What can I say? Uh, but in all seriousness, I did get a few comments about guitars or about my guitar and guitars in general from you guys during last week's video. And um, I did want to mention that I have a second channel where I talk about guitars, I talk about keyboards, synthesizers, and music gear in general. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Go check out that channel if you want to. I don't post on it super often, uh, but maybe if more of you guys come over there, I will a little bit more. If limited to only one Grand Seiko, I'd have to go with the Spring Drive. That's my good buddy Dale, and that's in reference to a video that I did talking about the Grand Seiko Spring Drive versus their high beat automatic movement. And yeah, I have to agree, if I'm getting a Grand Seiko, I'm gonna get a Spring Drive model if at all possible. And what I mean by that is, uh, I guess in the end, I care about other factors more. I will get the watch that I like the look of first and foremost. For me, it's about the design, the size, the fit on the wrist, and all of that stuff. That's more important to me than spring drive or automatic. But if all things are being equal, I would 100% go for a spring drive over an automatic. Do not give away your sub, Guy. Now, in a prior episode's Sunday with Guy, I had remarked about wanting to get my channel and my subscriber account up to 100,000 subscribers. That was my first initial goal, something that I would like to have happen by the end of this year even, which leaves me about six months. And I mentioned my frustration with the fact that so many people view my channel or view my videos and they aren't clicking that subscribe button. As a matter of fact, it's like 89% of the viewers aren't hitting the subscribe button. So let me just say now, please subscribe and help me out with that little bit of support, it would really mean the world to me if you did. Now, I guess I digress. Last week I mentioned that I had an idea to try to help stir up some excitement and get you guys to click that subscribe button, and I said maybe I should do a giveaway. And it crossed my mind to use this watch here, my Rolex Submariner, as the prize. And, um, well, shockingly, almost every person who commented said, do not give away the Rolex. And honestly, I thought people would be chomping at the bit for a Rolex giveaway. I thought that would really get some hype going. But I have to say that I'm actually, I don't know, proud or impressed with everyone who thought of me before themselves and before potentially winning an expensive watch. They said that it would be bad for me to give that watch away as a giveaway prize. So listen, thank you to everyone who commented and gave their opinion on that. Now, I do still want to do a giveaway sometime in the near future, and I have some other things in mind, and I'm also looking for a sponsor as well so that hopefully we can give away something really cool. So when I have all of that in place, I will let you guys know. Great review. It's a nice alternative to the OG Square. Now, this was a message from longtime viewer and friend of the channel, Badger Jeff, left on the video that I did on the, uh, the Casio Oak GA 2100 G-Shock. And yeah, that was a super cool watch and a great alternative to the Square G-Shock. Although, if push comes to shove, I am going to pick the DW5600 Square G-Shock over just about any watch that's ever been made, if I'm being brutally honest. There may be a few watches that I like better than the Square G-Shock, but there are not many. And I gotta say this, speaking of the Casio G-Shock, I've got this crazy $2,000 Casio G-Shock here for a review. It's the reference GCW B5000UN-6 Casio G-Shock, and it is a crazy carbon fiber constructed limited edition on a bracelet with Bluetooth and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Now, is a G-Shock worth 2,000 bucks? I mean, probably not to most people, but if you're a collector of G-Shock, if you're an enthusiast, I have to say you should stay tuned for the full review on this one. It's gonna be coming in the next week or two. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss it. 
Would you say that it's still a great value for seven or eight hundred dollars? Is the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic 38 millimeters, which is one of my all-time favorite watches, still a good value? Well, the retail price for this model on a bracelet is $745, and on a leather strap, it comes in at $695. Now, of course, you can find them for less on gray market sites like Joma Shop, and most dealers are usually willing to give discounts in the range of 10%, sometimes more. So realistically, the average price is between about $500 and 600 bucks. And no, at the full retail price, the Hamilton Khaki Field isn't exactly a great value. But it is still definitely a great watch, and it's one that I would recommend to anyone looking for a casual, everyday sports watch. And like I said, it's still one of my all-time favorites. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up for today. Thanks for tuning in and watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Do me that one favor and hit the subscribe button before you go. Of course, you can also leave a comment down below with your questions for the next Sunday with Guy episode, and if it's a good one, I will include it in the discussion. Now, with all of that said, let me go ahead and say thanks once more, and again, until the next one, bye now.